in many experiments, we're interested in comparing more than two conditions. One way to do this is to compare pairs of means. This method is known, not surprisingly, as pairwise comparisons. For example, say you are interested in differences in job satisfaction ratings between doctors, nurses, and hospital administrative staff. You could compare the mean job satisfaction ratings of doctors and nurses, then compare the mean ratings for doctors and administrative staff, and finally compare the mean rating for nurses and administrative staff. Let's take as a second example the case study on smiling and leniency. This study investigated the effect of different types of smiles on the leniency shown to a person. The four types of smiles are shown here, false, felt, neutral, and miserable. How do you think we should go about testing for differences in how the man was treated when he had different kinds of smiles? One way to proceed would be to do a t-test of each group mean with each other group mean. So you would compare the mean in the false condition to the mean in the felt condition, then compare the mean in the false condition to the mean in the neutral condition, and so on. This method would result in six comparisons altogether. The problem with this approach is that if you performed six t-tests, you would have six chances to make a type 1 error. When a type 1 error is made, a true null hypothesis is incorrectly rejected. As statisticians like to talk in double negatives, I'll translate. It means that you would conclude that there is a difference in the population when in fact there is none. Therefore, if you're using the 0.05 significance level, the probability that you would make a type 1 error on at least one of these comparisons is greater than 0.05 and the more means that are compared, the more the type 1 error rate is inflated. This graph shows the number of possible comparisons between pairs of means as a function of the number of means. If there are only two means, then only one comparison can be made. But if there are 12 means, then there are 66 possible comparisons. This graph shows the probability of a type 1 error as a function of the number of means. As you can see, if you have an experiment with 12 means, the probability that at least one of the 66 comparisons among means would be significant, even though all 12 population means were about the same, is about 0.70. The inflated type 1 error rate can be controlled using the Tukey Honestly Significant Difference Test, or Tukey HSD for short. The Tukey HSD is based on the studentized range distribution, which is a variation of the t-distribution. We use the studentized range distribution because it takes into account the number of means being compared. Let's get back to our example, the smiling and leniency study, to see how we compute the Tukey HSD test. You might notice that the computations are very similar to those of an independent group's t-test. We'll go through each of the four steps to compute Tukey HSD. We'll compute the means and variances, the mean square error, the studentized t, which is also known as q, and then the p-value. First, we compute the means and variances of each group. They are shown in the table here. Second, compute the mean square error, or MSE. This is simply the mean of the variances. Here, it is equal to 2.65. Third, calculate the studentized t, also known as q, for each pair of means. In this equation, m sub i is one mean, m sub j is the other mean, and n is the number of scores in each group. For these data, there are 34 observations per group, so our n is 34. The value in the denominator is the square root of the mean square error, 2.65, divided by 34, which equals 0 0.279. Finally, compute p for each comparison using the studentized range calculator. You plug in q, the number of means, and your degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is equal to the total number of observations minus the number of means. So, for this experiment, that's 136 minus 4, which equals 132. 
Now we have our results. The only significant comparison is between the false smile and the neutral smile. You might notice that some of these results appear to be paradoxical. For example, it looks like the false smile is the same as the miserable smile, and the miserable smile is the same as the neutral smile. But the false smile is different from the neutral smile. This kind of pattern is not unusual, and it isn't contradictory when you think about what it means to fail to reject the null hypothesis. When you fail to reject the null hypothesis, it is not the same as accepting it. The finding that the false smile is not significantly different from the miserable smile does not mean that they are really the same. It just means that there is not convincing evidence that they are different. Finally, when using the two-key HSD test, or any statistical test, remember to check your assumptions. Tukey's test assumes normality, homogeneity of variance, and independent observations. The test is pretty robust to violations of normality, but violating homogeneity of variance can be more problematic because the mean square error is based on data from all groups, whereas the comparisons each involve only two groups. The assumption of independence of observations is crucial and should not be violated.